Hello and welcome to this video on live session features and controls. Um, what I'd like to do in this session is share some of the basic uh, functionality of common webinar or, or live session software that's available to help you get started with delivering webinars and live sessions, particularly for the first time, um, and to talk about some of the interactivity features, things that can help uh, develop engaging sessions for uh, instructor to participant uh, uh, connection and also participant to participant connection. Uh, so let's get started and have a look at some of the basic features. Uh, so basic controls and layout, you have your main screen here where I'm sharing some slides uh, that I've set up earlier. You have the basic controls here at the bottom of the of the screen, uh, which are more your personal settings and controls, uh, your audio, so your microphone, so whether you're muted or whether you're unmuted, um, a key uh, tool to be able to use very quickly and get used to being able to use very quickly and easily uh, to mute yourself, unmute yourself when you don't need to. Um, your web and your webcam uh, function as well, similar kind of things, so switching a video on, switching a video off. In this case, there's also a raise hand function uh, when you click that as a, as a participant it lets the moderator know that you've got a question or you've got an issue or that you need some kind of help or support uh, there's some further settings uh, and, and status um, actions here in the setting which we'll come back to a bit later today um, <clears throat> Next up, you know, in addition to the main page, you have what's typically on the right-hand side uh, panels, a list of participants. So normally your list would, uh, of people who are attending your session would be populated here. And then you have uh, your chat function, um, other options around sharing content, and some settings here as well. We'll come on to those in a bit more detail uh, in a few moments' time. Um, so once you're familiar with the basic setup, the basic layout, which uh, you know tends to tends to be similar across the different software that's available, uh, and once you're familiar with your microphone and video settings, you might want to just double check that the settings are working. And in this case, you can come to the My Settings section and look at the setup, a camera, a microphone settings that are available. Uh, you can also share for um, the participants the dial-in functionality. Not every system has that, but this system does. Most systems do. Uh, so you can always share the details for, for participants to dial in. If they're struggling with connection or don't have a microphone, it might be easier for them to use their phone uh, to, to attend the session. Uh, and once you're happy that all of that's working, your audio is working, your webcam's working, etc., you'll probably want to be thinking about recording the session, so getting that set up and ready um, so that you can record the session and share it for those that weren't able to attend. Um, and each system has a little, uh, has a different space where the record uh, button sits, but in this case it's really simple. Up in the top left hand corner, click on this extra menu here and you can start the recording very simply just by clicking the button there uh, when you're ready to go back to the session and end the recording, you come back to the same space and it will then say stop recording, you'll stop the recording and you'll have access to the recording afterwards. Um, sometimes that's emailed out directly to you depending on the system, sometimes that's available within a, another account space and you'll just have to log into your account and extract the uh, the link to the recording for your participants, uh, then you can share it uh, and make it available to everyone. So basic uh, features here, getting started, that should be enough really just to get you up and running, get the session started. Um, and then what I'd like to do now is have a look at some of the more kind of interactive features, some of the things that help uh, engage your participants, uh, connect the participants to yourself and to each other. Um, and one of the key things uh, is the, uh, the chat function here, uh, typically on the right hand side of the screen. Here, uh, participants can choose whether they'd like to message everyone uh, in the group. So everybody that's attending the session, uh, they can send a message out directly to everybody. So everyone will see what's happening. Uh, or they can select to message just the moderators or the instructors. So the individuals like myself who are, who are running the session. Um, and that's a more of a sort of private chat function uh, just to come to the attendee. Um, you can also choose if you if there's a participant that you want to have a private message or a private chat with, you can search this uh, field here, uh, find the person that you want to speak to and send them a direct message as well. Um, it's worth just being careful for the participant's point of view to make sure that they're posting the messages in the right space, of course. Uh, but it, typically uh, the participants will use the space that everyone can see and they can uh, type something in here and it will come up uh, in the screen. They'll be able to respond to others and see what's happening. And it's a really useful uh, functionality for uh, the instructor because particularly when you have large groups or even uh, you know any more than, than five or, or six participants <coughs> with microphones on, uh, it can get quite difficult with people talking over each other, not knowing when to speak. So when you have a question you want to ask to the group, you can pose the question uh, using your microphone and ask 
the uh, participants to respond using the chat function. Uh, that way you can observe all of the, the responses really clearly. Um, you can give them a minute or two just to, to think about the response and have enough time to, to answer the question. And also just it offers a little bit of a pause or a break in the uh, in the session, a bit of a time for the for the participants to be doing something active and to get them engaged in the session. So uh, important to regularly stop and ask questions. <clears throat> One of the ways in which you can do that is to use the chat function and get uh, free text responses from the participants. Um, another way you can pause and ask questions uh, is using the voting. Uh, functionality and the voting functionality is in this system available here underneath the uh, the my uh, status and settings uh, space here and you can see some of the pre-populated options here for feedback which you can use uh, as a kind of voting tool and so for example you might want to ask the participants you know is this session going too quickly is it going too slowly um, and you can ask them to vote and if I vote uh, um, that I think it's going too slowly and I think it should go faster um, you as the administrator or the moderator of the session you'll see the responses up here and you'll see a tally for the number of people who have responded faster or slower and it's a really good way particularly with larger groups to get a quick response and to get a real quick pulse uh, check of the room to understand how they're all getting on, whether there's anything you need to change about the session uh, uh, to make things to make things work more more smoothly. Uh, but you can also use it. Uh, you can get creative with how you might use it, and use it for feedback on specific questions around topics that you have, or to check understandings. You know, so you could ask the the group. You know, everybody happy with this? Uh, do you need me to go over it again? Please just vote. You know, you're happy for me to continue, or uh, you're sad. You want me to to re review that, go over that again. And you can be kind of creative about how you use this. Uh, but a good way to get a really easy, uh, quick feedback on questions uh, that you might like to ask. Um, the third option is polling, um, and I'll have a look at the polling system uh, with you. So here you can set up a couple of different different options, very typical across all the different types of systems available. Um, here you can have either multiple choice or yes or no questions. So in the multiple choice option, you can type in here your question um, and then you can type in the potential responses and you can send this poll to the group. Uh, the group will get the chance to respond and you'll be able to share the responses to the whole the whole cohort or the participants um, which is a good way to, to do things a good, particularly good way to share the responses so that everybody can see it but it, the polls typically do require a little bit more planning in advance so if you want to use polling you usually have to think of the questions and the responses in advance have them ready and set up and easy uh, easy to facilitate um, and in some cases you actually have to set up and save the polls questions in advance of the session and uh, essentially tag them to a specific section the session so if you have a session on a Tuesday at two o'clock and you want to use a poll you'll have to go in and plan that session write the polls, save them for that session, um, and so they do require a little bit more planning in advance. In this system, you can write the question live, so you can write the I could be writing the question now and writing the, the responses, but you will just then need to factor in the time uh, that you're writing those 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 questions uh, for the poll <clears throat> uh, into your session, and bear in mind that they'll be, the, the participants will be kind of waiting for you to do that. Um, so a little bit of consideration about how you might like to use them, but a nice and engaging tool to use, particularly for the participants to see the feedback. Um, another uh, interactive function you can use is the uh, whiteboard function. Uh, I'm not going to toggle that on because it removes the the, uh, the the screens that I'm sharing just now. But you know, essentially, the whiteboard function offers a, a white screen here, a blank screen where you can see my slide here, um, and these uh, tools here above where you can draw, you can add shapes, you can add text, uh, you can clear it, you can add different backgrounds, etc. And you can use that to draw things, draw graphs, or charts, or, or to write things out that you know might be complex that you want to teach in real time, uh, and use that as a kind of collaborative space for the participants to add things as well. So you can allow the participants to write in the whiteboard also, um, and a really nice sort of engaging live way to teach, essentially replacing your uh, whiteboard or chalkboard you know you might have in your classroom uh, and finally really interesting um, uh, feature uh, left or last the breakout rooms uh, are a great way to divide up the larger cohort the larger participant groups into smaller groups for individual tasks or activities or things that you might like them to discuss as, as a in smaller groups um, what you can do is uh, take the whole cohort and break it up into as many different smaller groups that you'd like and you can uh, arrange these settings uh, once you have more participants you can adjust how you'd like to uh, assign people to groups you can put people in into groups automatically just based on the number of, of people you want in 
each group. You can uh, manually place people into groups if you've got groups that are pre-existing in, in maybe a, a blended learning setting that you already have groups available um, and you want to make sure those groups are maintained and that they discuss here. You can do that also. Um, and then once once you start the, uh, the breakout group functionality, uh, all the participants will be divided up into their own smaller group space, virtual group space. They'll have the chance to chat, use some of the functions that are that are available here. Uh, and then you'll be able to close those rooms and they can come back to the main room to share any outputs from that, that group session um, or to get some feedback on some of the things that they could have been doing. So great functionality, something that's a little bit more advanced um, uh, for those that are new to, to uh, live sessions and webinars. And again, like, a bit like the polling, it takes a little bit of planning and just thought in advance uh, in terms of how you might actually like to do this. And so a little bit of thought and planning going into this will help. Um, but really, that's uh, essentially a quick run through some of the basic features of uh, common uh, webinar systems and live session uh, systems. Uh, I've used here uh, Blackboard Collaborate, not the only system available, of course. Each of them has their own advantages and disadvantages, uh, but you know the best thing is really just to get in uh, with them, play around with some of the controls, have a look at some of these features that I've highlighted and find where they are so that you know uh, where they are when you need to use them, <coughs> test out any activities that you might want to use uh, just so you see how they work, um, and <coughs> really just have, fun, have some fun with it and try to just play around again some experience with it there's no no uh, uh, substitute for for testing it out and getting hands-on with it um, but best of luck for everyone that's new to it uh, having a go at it just give it a go and see how see how you get on uh, but best of luck i hope it's helpful